Uh, hey everyone, it's Maxim here. Uh, so I ended up in Paris somehow. You can see the Eiffel Tower behind me. Here we go. The city of love. It's a good place to talk about life. <laughs> and life and love kind of all intermingle together. And it's this beautiful aquarium on the other side. Let me see. Beautiful place. <laughs> so the poets and all the singers, and there's been million songs, millions of ways to try to define love. And uh, I'll try again. <laughs> Just reiterating on it. And one thing which made very clear to me recently is love is not necessarily feeling it's something that that you you choose and you choose that either consciously or subconsciously so all these uh, amazing feelings of love when we fall in love that's a choice Accept the choice we made unconsciously, we made the choice with our subconscious intuition, uh, you call it the universe, you can call it I feel the energy between us, all of this is basically our subconsciousness making a choice for us and us saying that we don't have a choice when we're saying that uh, the universe decides. We we take responsibility out of the question. We just say that well, the universe decides. It's not really the universe. It's you. It's still you, and you can still listen to your subconsciousness, and you can make another decision. You can make a different decision. It's hard. It's super hard because, as I've uh, mentioned in my article on the intuition, there's like countless books written on the subject that. We don't understand how much of our life is driven by subconsciousness and that we only operate in a conscious mind actually like 10% of our, of our life, which is crazy. So I challenge you for this 10% when you are making conscious decisions, do make a conscious decision to either be in love or not be in love with a person. Because the universe is one thing, but when you make a decision consciously, then you can make conscious decisions about the, the things that you're gonna do to be in that relationship. And uh, I think uh, being in a relationship is part of your own evolution uh, because we get so close to another person and we open so much that we unwillingly letting them hurt us unwillingly letting them steer all those old patterns and all those wounds they had in them and we had in us and we get angry at them for that <laughs> But we are the one who opened it up. We are the one who told them about this. Most of the time. Sometimes it just happens accidentally. <laughs> and uh, there is purpose in it. And the purpose for me is to evolve. To evolve beyond these old patterns and old things which, as surprisingly as it is, even when I'm like now 30, I understand that majority of my actions are driven by the triggers formed in childhood when I was like five, six, seven year old which is kind of call for all your parents out there be careful with what you do with your children when they're that young because it's gonna affect them for the rest of their life so uh, it will and uh, hopefully they can find a way to see those patterns and find a way to transition them. I'm still working on it. There's many, many things I 
wish I had uh, done better, but it's a continuous process, it's evolution and it takes time. And the time is what I have right now. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoy the view of the Eiffel Tower behind me. And uh, I'll see you next time in a different city, I guess. 